Hey Harmonizers, welcome to this Asha update where I'm going to show you guys some of the things that we're doing to help get her ready to be in our lesson program. This is my little girl Evelyn here that's playing with Asha. She's been spending some time with her, which is great for Asha to get used to little people, but also fun for Evelyn as well. So she, we've been doing a little bit of getting Evelyn to do some grooming with her as well as some pony rides and stuff like that. So it's all been uh, really good exposure for Asha and fun for Evelyn's confidence to learn how to do different things as well. So just exposing the horses to all these um, different things is really good for them. We've been doing a bunch of uh, kind of leaning on her like this. So this is Natalie that's riding uh, Asha, who's not one of our horse trainers per se, but she's one of our super advanced uh, students that's doing some training stuff with Asha and getting her used to different things. So she's flapping her arms around there and doing some various stuff and uh, practicing moving around. So especially if you're going to have beginners on your back, you need to make sure that you're not going to, the horse isn't going to be upset by people moving around or putting their legs way too far back and all of those little things that could potentially trigger a horse to just go, ah, like, what was that? You want to make sure that the horse has kind of felt those things out and understands that people move around. If a horse is always ridden by somebody who's super easygoing and very um, go with the flow and very aware of their body and doesn't kind of bounce around on them at all, then it can be quite shocking for them to have beginners or people who lose their balance and stuff like that. It can be a little bit scary. So it's always better to introduce that with somebody who knows what they're doing first. And then We've been doing some building confidence stuff. So I can show you some stuff that we're doing with the ball where we're doing some little tests where I actually kick the ball kind of at Asha and the idea is that she can just kind of maintain a, a consistent pace and not get worked up or be upset about that. So that was a pretty good test there because she was trotting by and that ball was pretty darn close to hitting her and she really didn't have a a big reaction or anything to that so that's really good and then here uh, Natalie turning her around to see if she'll go ahead and kick it again after it came at her which can sometimes be a little bit of a tough task to get them to touch the ball after they realize the ball might come flying and hurtling at them so she's going to ask her to take another little step there see if she can do a little kick so that's really looking pretty good there and the balls are just handy because they're light. If they do touch them or hit the horse or something like that, it's not going to hurt the horse. And uh, they fly pretty darn well when you're doing distraction tests. So here's another distraction test with the ball going right out in front of her. And you can see Asha doesn't really move at all. She isn't really phased by that at all. So she's going to earn a little cookie there. And we try different positions, like sometimes behind her, like here it's going behind her, sometimes in front of her. And she doesn't really have any warning or anything like that. I just kind of kick it at her. Of course, I try my best not to hit her. I did not hit her during this session because the goal is not to, you know, really scare her. We're just testing out the different distractions and things that are going on. So she did really, really well with all of that. And that's just going to help with her overall confidence of being able to ignore distractions and other things that are going on here. So here's a little look at some of her jumping and where she's doing with that training. So we have a lot of clients that do jumping and that's Natalie on purpose, kind of flopping over the fence and being uh, not super great with her position just to see what she would do. So really with them um, horses, again, if, if you always ride, if you always have people who ride perfectly on the horses and then they get ridden by beginners, they can get spooked and startled sometimes by people having really poor posture. So it's not that we want to, you know, bounce on her and make it uncomfortable for her, but we don't want her to be upset if somebody has a bit of a weird fence and and, you know, accidentally throws the reins too far forward or anything like that. So we want to make sure we play around with different positions and and sometimes doing weird and different things so she can get used to all that. So here you guys uh, can take a look at, at some of her canner work with the jumps. So there she took the fence um, a little bit awkwardly. Whenever you do a fence on a corner like that, it always makes it a little bit more 
challenging. So we're going to get Asha to retake that fence in a second and figure out her striding a little bit more. Whenever you have a turn like this and the jumps on the center, there isn't really a lot of strides for the horse to figure out their feet and plan where they're going. So that's what makes it a little bit more challenging. And Asha has been working on figuring out her striding to the jumps. It's a skill that they have to learn. Uh, it's not something that is always easy for them to figure out. And the more she can start to figure out her feet and how to adjust her steps to get the correct takeoff spots is just going to help her feel comfortable and the riders and the students feel comfortable as well. So that first jump there is what we would call a long fence or a long takeoff spot. And then that second jump you can see was much smoother because she found a better distance to take off from. It was uh, kind of perfect over that one there. So when we talk about jumping, eh, when they're trotting, it's not too difficult because a trot stride, a trot step isn't too long. But when a horse canters, they actually have a moment of that stride where all four feet are off the ground. It's called a moment of suspension. And depending on where you are in that step, you can't take off or jump if all four feet are up in the air already. So you have to be able to shorten the step or lengthen the step or also called the stride to get the horse to have a smooth takeoff spot. Otherwise it can end up being too far away or too close to um, the jumps, which can be difficult for the horse. So that was just an attempt there at a flying lead change just to see if she might have some natural lead change to her, which she doesn't really. She's that she kind of broke stride to get and uh, didn't switch from the right to the left automatically there. So not as agile as Cookie that you've seen in her video where she was very nifty with her leads and got them no problem. So we like to do that when we're just testing the horses out just to kind of get a feel for what's their natural balance. So here's from the left lead to the right lead to see if she would swap. And she did swap her front legs and her back legs, she doesn't get right away. And it takes her about a circle because now she's on the correct lead there. She ended up getting it. So that's where they're leading with their legs. And you want to see them switch at the same time. But sometimes they switch their front legs or their back legs first, which is called a cross canter. So here we'll do a little bit more uh, jumping and looking at those canter strides. So normally for jumps that are less than three feet or so, you're going to see a horse take off about three feet away from the jump. And then when the jumps start to get bigger, they'll take off as far away as about six feet away from the jump is considered kind of normal and average. And this is something that the horse learns to adjust and figure out. Riders can also help tell a horse to wait or to stretch out and get those strides but when we're first teaching a horse how to jump it's great if we can just kind of stay out of their way a little bit just set them up to stay nice and straight and otherwise just kind of give them the rein a little bit and let them figure out how to plan their own feet and then they, they can become a little bit more independent which helps them be better for beginners and stuff like that because then they know how to plan their own feet so as Natalie comes into the jumps, you'll see that she's not really what's called setting up the jump very well. She's kind of just steering straight or somewhat straight in that case there. And then um, giving Asha a little bit of slack in the rain and letting her plan her, her feet herself. So she's just more focusing on that straightness piece. And you can see Asha is starting to do really, really well with these canter jumps. She's starting to figure out where she's supposed to go and counting those strides down is getting really, really nicely. So I'm really happy with her. She's uh, almost ready to start getting used in the um, lesson program. And uh, we'll start, it our, start her off with a couple lessons and see how she does. But overall, I'm super excited.